Welcome to NBP Hot Seat. This is Zaf Quayle from Nuclear Business Platform, and I'm your host for today. Joining me today is Mr. George Borovas, who is the head of nuclear from Huntins. Now, George has advised governments, lenders, and sponsors on the development of civilian nuclear power programs and also the financing and construction of nuclear power plants. He has worked on many projects and transactions globally, and more recently in projects involving the UAE and Egypt. Welcome, George. Delighted to have you with us again today on NBP Hot Seat. I believe uh, the last time we spoke was around half a year back when we were talking about the advantages and challenges of uh, small modular reactors. Now, since then, lots have developed, lots of things have changed in the industry. Lots of new developments have ha happened, um, especially in the European context, George. Yes. Hi, Zaf. Uh, always a pleasure to, to see you and to be joining the Nuclear Business Platform. Wonderful. So, George, um, as mentioned, you know, um, in Europe right now, we are seeing lots of uh, developments on the nuclear front. Um, and especially um, what's more heartening is to see many European countries starting to embrace uh, nuclear energy uh, more positively and mainly driven by two main um, uh, uh, issues, which is one, ensuring energy security and also realizing that nuclear has a pivotal role to achieve a low carbon um, economy. Um, so what is your overall take on the current outlook of nuclear energy in Europe, George? Well, the, the past few months it have been the um, continuation of a trend that we've been seeing for the past uh, couple of years, I must say, whereas climate change has become for the forefront of everybody's policy decision, especially in Europe. Uh, and of course, um, uh, security of supply has always been uh, something that countries were, uh, were, were concerned about. Of course, with the latest developments uh, in the Ukrainian crisis, um, that issue of security supply has become even more pronounced. So now uh, countries in Europe are understanding the challenges of facing that they're facing by having um, by relying on other countries for their energy needs. Uh, and certainly nuclear has now become again um, at the forefront of policy decision makers to to examine and re-examine each country's position uh, uh, with respect to nuclear. So it is a continuation of a trend that we've seen, but certainly the past few months have crystallized the issues and we see rapid developments now. Yeah, in fact, you know, um, in Europe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they currently import 60% of their energy needs. And, you know, this has uh, became, this has become a very focal focal number as uh, Europe tries to uh, tries to reduce that dependency on, uh, on uh, energy importation. Now, several of the European countries are of course leading the way they are more, they are more um, forthcoming with their, with their plans. We have seen the UK announcing uh, that they're going to be building X number of reactors by in the next decade. Even France has, has a, a new renaissance with regards to having more, more EPRs uh, in, in their own country. Um, are there other European countries that we should be looking out uh, for, uh, George? Yes, many actually. Uh, first of all, yes, you're correct that the UK has been leading the efforts, it, it, as, you, as you remember, the UK has been the, probably one of the few countries that um, has been looking at new nuclear in an uninterrupted basis over the past uh, few years. I remember first talking about new nuclear in, in the UK in 2005 and 2006, when the governments were talking about policy and how to support them. Uh, yep. So there's been a consistency there in the fact that they're building now a big reactor and that they're moving ahead with their new build program um, is just a, a continuation of what they've been doing for a, for a long time. But with respect to continental Europe, we've certainly seen a huge shift. Uh, France, um, of course, had come in uh, with the Macron presidency. Uh, President Macron had come in with the, uh, with the plan to reduce reliance on nuclear and pr bring it down to about 50%, I think. Um, and now over the past uh, year, we've seen a shift where he's talking about the building of a new fleet of EPR reactors and the development of an SMR technology program for France, which is great news because France is de no, no doubt about it, uh, an undisputable leader uh, of nuclear throughout the world and especially in Europe. But also, if you look, you have now um, the Czech Republic that is beginning its nuclear program, uh, re, re, uh, its new build program. You have Hungary building a nuclear reactor. Uh, we have Finland, of course, finishing its EPR. Uh, there was, of course, the setback uh, with respect to the Russian project that was just cancelled, uh, but that's based on the geopolitics and situation there. 
uh, but there's many other countries that are embarking on some very, very serious uh, nuclear programs, including Romania, uh, which is looking now to reignite its new build program and to finish its reactors with the support of the United States. Uh, so um, we've seen a number of other countries that are, uh, again, changing their position. For example, uh, for example, Belgium just announced the reversal of its freezing, of its uh, winding down of its nuclear program. The new Dutch government is uh, has announced a uh, building new nuclear reactor. So the winds have shifted completely in Europe. Wonderful. And I, I think what's really heartening to see also and really welcoming is that in the past, what we have noticed is that you know whenever an election is coming, um, governments tend to be more 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 quiet about their nuclear plans. But as you mentioned, uh, President Macron in, in, in his recent election campaign, he was going to run uh, a campaign and he announced uh, you know, the, the massive plans for France to, to re-embrace uh, nuclear energy, which is, which is heartening. Uh, and it shows the shift in, in uh, ideology also from governments to not use nuclear as a political tool, but as a necessary a necessitous uh, city with regards to their energy needs and their energy demand. So I think that's also a, a positive uh, development that, that we have seen um, in the context of Europe. Now, you know, shifting shifting towards a nuclear leadership in, in Europe, of course, you know, the Euro most European countries are governed by the, the, by the EU. And, you know, in, uh, earlier this year, um, the, the European Union have come out to say that, you know, as part of their EU taxonomy, that nuclear should be considered as a green form of energy. Now, what do you think the, the EU taxonomy um, and its impact on the nuclear developments is in Europe is going to be, George? Well, first of all, I think this is a big moral victory uh, for the nuclear industry in Europe. For years, uh, uh, Europe uh, had uh, you know, a lot of European countries, not all, but many European countries have been treating nuclear as being something of the past something that is not uh, sustainable, there's something that's not environmentally friendly. So even the fact that now that nuclear has become part of the EU taxonomy uh, with some um, conditions, of course, it is still a big, big moral victory in, uh, for, for nuclear, for the realization that nuclear is both sustainable and can help with the transition to uh, carbon-free uh, electricity. So I think that's the first point. The second point is that what this is going to do, it's going to, you, you have now an endorsement basically of the European Union that nuclear should become part of the uh, transition to a zero carbon um, uh, future. And um, that means that that potentially can unlock a lot of funding, a lot of financial support for new nuclear projects, and it helps with the local politics. So I think overall, it increases the likelihood that you will have many more nuclear projects in, in, the, in the European Union. It's still a little bit unclear about certain, some of the conditions that were gonna be placed on nuclear with respect to the EU taxonomy to allow uh, the classification the way it is, but I think it's still a very, very positive move. And do you, do you see any potential spillover effects with regards to the EU taxonomy and how other multilateral organizations such as the World Bank or IMF uh, start to view nuclear energy? That's a, that's a tougher question. Um, the, we have looked in many years for in a number of multilaterals um, in, in that they seem to have very strong policies not to support nuclear. Um, just the nature of these organizations, it is hard to change these policies easily because uh, a lot of them are consensus driven. Um, so I would find that to be a bigger challenge. But interestingly enough, just like the, you know, the um, reality in the markets react to what's, what's needed, uh, there is an effort underway now to develop uh, something like a multilateral organization that will support nuclear projects. And a number of um, experts around the world have come together um, to develop this um, uh, concept for a bank that would help on a multilateral basis. I'm one of them and I'm supporting that effort. And I think that there is potentially some more developments on that side that are coming up soon. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, hopefully we can see some uh, more positive development because I think at the end of the day, um, if, if we can get globally, you know, uh, key organization, key multilateral, multilateral organization to think in a, not with their heart, but in a scientific manner with regards to the pros of nuclear. And eventually, hopefully they will come to a realization that, you know, if we're really serious about achieving net zero, a carbon neutral economy, 
nuclear energy has to be part of the equation and certainly getting uh, uh, financing options from such institutions will, will go a long way uh, to helping more countries embrace nuclear energy, not, not just in Europe, but across uh, many other of the emerging countries. George, uh, I guess one final one final question, uh, or rather to, to get to get your thoughts. What is your what is your what is your your outlook of uh, of nuclear energy in, in Europe? I mean, like, do you do you see this trend continuing to to be on the on the rise, George? I do, I do. I think uh, it's a necessity now. Um, I think that Europe needs to get there for um, energy security, for climate change geopolitical reasons um, i think it makes all the sense of the world i would always urge um, people in the industry to be careful and cautious um, and to do small steps in the right direction and no mistakes in the past we've seen uh nuclear come back but real dreams not realized uh, so i think now is the time to be prudent and um and careful but moving ahead with small steps. So I do think that there is a great future for nuclear in Europe in the small in the large existing reactors, but also in potentially in the small modular reactors that we can start seeing uh, across Europe coming in soon. Wonderful, wonderful. George, thank you once again uh, for joining us today on NPP Hot Seat. Always great to have you on, George. Always great to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. And for all our viewers, Hunton has a unique experience advising governments on program developments, including the UAE and Egypt, as mentioned earlier. The firm has a full scope of nuclear practice advising on the most high profile nuclear projects around the world. Feel free to get in touch with George if you wish to discuss further uh, nuclear energy developments. And to all our viewers, feel, please feel free to leave your comments and your feedback um, in the Q&A box below. And also subscribe to our channel if you would like to gain further insights from global nuclear leaders such as Mr. George Porovas. Wonderful. Have a great day ahead. This is Zaf Quello signing out. Bye for now.